Hello and welcome back to the Hasbajan YouTube channel. It is Harry here and today it is time to continue on with my football alphabet series where I go through the best players and clubs whose surnames slash names begin with a particular letter of the alphabet. A few weeks ago I did the best clubs whose names begin with K, so the part two of this particular segment is of course the best players. If you want to check out that particular video, as well as all the other episodes I've done in the Football Alphabet series thus far, the players link is in the description down below, and whilst you're there of course, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. But without any further ado, here is my Hall of Fame of the best players whose surnames begin with the letter K. Number 1. Rajlo Kupala Picking between two Hungarian legends, namely Sandor Kokshis and Rajlo Kupala, is almost impossible, but I've gone for Kupala because of the impact he had on the sport, despite Kokshis being one of the greatest goalscorers of all time. Born in 1927 in Budapest, Kubala has Slovak, Polish and Hungarian heritage and his first country that he represented at international level was actually Czechoslovakia, given that he moved there in 1946 to sign for Slovan Bratislava from Franek Varos in Hungary, where he was a teammate of Kokšis. He returned to Hungary in 1949 to avoid Czechoslovak military service, but in 1949, when Hungary became a socialist country, Kubala fled in the back of a truck with his wife and child, eventually arriving in Italy. He officially joined Pro Patria, but he also agreed to play for Torino in a testimonial match against Benfica in May 1949, although he had to pull out at the last minute owing to his son falling ill. It was a lucky escape for Kubala, as when the Torino team returned from that game, their plane crashed into the Basilica of Superga, killing everyone on board. After FIFA banned him for a year as a result of him fleeing Hungary, he formed his own team, Hungaria, made up exclusively of refugees, who played a series of friendlies against Spanish opposition in 1950, including Real Madrid. So impressed were Los Blancos by the forward's proficiency in front of goal, skill on the ball and blistering pace that they wanted to sign him immediately. But since the ban was still hanging over his head and they refused to let his brother-in-law become a coach at the club as per Kubala's demands, the move fell through. Sensing opportunity, Barcelona swooped in and stole him from under Madrid's noses, leaving Real president Santiago Bernabeu absolutely livid. He made his long way to debut for the Catalans in 1951 when his ban expired, scoring 26 goals in 19 games in his first full season and lifting the La Liga and Copa del Generalismo titles, winning three and four more of each respectively in the decade or so that followed. He facilitated moves for fellow Hungarians Kokshis and Zoltan Sibor to come to Barcelona in 1958 after they too had fled Hungary as a result of the Hungarian uprising in 1956 and one of the reasons why Barcelona built the Camp Nou in the first place was because many people wanted to see Kubala in action but their stadium at the time, Shamartin, was too small to cope with the demands. He briefly retired in 1961 and became a youth coach at Barcelona, although he would return to playing in 1963, turning out for Toronto City, Espanyol, whom he also managed, Zurich and Toronto Falcons, before becoming a manager, including taking charge of Spain, for 11 years. His story is too complex and remarkable for a brief profile such as this, but I hope I've done my best to sum it up as concisely as I can. Number 2. Kaka Kaká used to be my favourite player growing up, although it was basically because he seemed like an extremely genuine person given his humanitarian work and the fact that he gave 10% of his wages to the church as opposed to how good of a footballer he was. But make no mistake, he was at one point the best in the world. Born in 1982, he started out at Sao Paulo, although his career and life as a whole was thrown into huge doubt after he fractured his spine in a swimming pool accident, but mercifully he made a full recovery. His good form for Sao Paulo was rewarded with a place in Brazil's 2002 World Cup winning squad, albeit he only managed three minutes on the pitch throughout the entire tournament, and European giants AC Milan were, according to the man himself, the only ones to register a firm interest in him, resulting in him moving to the San Siro in 2003. Over the next six years, he became one of the best players in the world, spellbinding everyone with his pace, vision, ability to glide past defences with consummate ease, ball control and finishing ability, only hitting below double figures for goals or assists just once on both fronts, although he would only lift one league title and one Champions League title whilst in Milan. He did win a substantial number of individual honours though, including two Serie A Footballer of the Year awards, with the first coming in his debut campaign in 2003-04, and the big one, the Ballon d'Or, in 2007, becoming the last person outside of Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo to win the award until 2018. 
In January 2009, Nouveau Riche managed the City, looking for yet another star signing to really show that they meant business in the transfer market, came in with a bid of £100 million, which Milan accepted, but Kaká turned them down, stating that he would only leave Milan for Real Madrid. Unsurprisingly then, when Madrid came calling in the summer of 2009 for a then world record £56 million, Kaká joined them, although his arrival was overshadowed by Cristiano Ronaldo's arrival for £80 million just a week later. Sadly, injuries began to take their toll in Madrid, and he wasn't able to put together a consistent run of matches, playing only 85 La Liga games across four seasons, although still managing to average a goal or an assist every other game. After failing to make the desired impact, he returned to Milan in 2013, putting in decent performances in this comeback campaign before becoming the flagship signing of new MLS franchise Orlando City in 2014. He stayed there for three seasons before retiring in 2017, and in February 2020, a clip went viral of a Sunday league player demanding that Kaká cut the ball back to him, which the Brazilian refused to do as he promptly went on to slot the ball between the goalkeeper's legs. 2020 really was strange. Number 3. Raymond Coppa One of France's greatest ever players, and the first sportsman to receive the Légion d'honneur, France's highest honour, Raymond Coppa was a technician through and through, capable of splitting defenders apart with his pace, passing range and dribbling ability in his free attacking role. Born in 1931, Coppa originally worked down the mines, losing a finger in the process, but after finishing second in the French national youth football trials in 1949, he was given a contract at local side Angers. After two seasons of great form with them, he moved to France's biggest side at the time, Stade de Reims, and became the creative spark in a team that won two Ligue 1 titles in his five years there, and reached the first European Cup final in 1956, losing to Real Madrid. Madrid themselves had courted Coppa ever since he played in a friendly for France against Spain in 1955, when he was dubbed Little Napoleon by Marsa, and they finally got their man in 1956. He was afforded freedom to do as he so pleased in the Los Blancos team, and alongside people like Alfredo Di Stefano, Paco Gento, and later on Ferenc Puskas, which must be the greatest attacking quartet in the history of football, he fired Los Blancos to two La Liga titles and three European Cups in his three seasons there, as well as helping France achieve third place at the 1958 World Cup, the year he won the Ballon d'Or. His career then came almost full circle when he moved back to Reims after beating them with Real in the 1959 European Cup final, spending eight more years with them and scooping up two more league titles. He even stuck with Reims when they were stunningly relegated to Division 2 in 1964, helping them win promotion in 1966 before retiring the year after. In 2018, the year after Coppa's death at the age of 85, the Coppa Trophy, awarded to the best young player in France, was created, and its first recipient was one Kylian Mbappe. Number 4. Ronald Koeman While he might be viewed as a joke of a manager nowadays, especially after joining the circus that is Barcelona in 2020, let us not forget that Ronald Koeman was, in his own right, an extremely talented defender, combining strength, grace and elegance on the ball with a cannon of a right foot that served him well when shooting from distance. Born in 1963, he began at Groningen before moving to Ajax in 1983, although he made a controversial transfer to PSV in 1986, who were the dominant team in Dutch football at the time. With them, he won a hat-trick of league titles and the European Cup in 1988, the year in which he scored 26 goals in all competitions. Before Barcelona snapped him up in 1989, where he truly established himself as an elite defender. He won four straight league titles between 1991 and 1994 as an integral part of Johan Cruyff's dream team, and he scored the goal which won Barcelona their first European Cup in 1992. And remarkably, he would go on to score 90 goals for them across six seasons, making them their highest scoring defender of all time, with 26 of those goals coming from free kicks and 46 from penalties, records only bettered at the club by one Lionel Messi. He ended his career at Feyenoord, making him one of the few players to play for each of the Netherlands' big three, having scored 193 league goals, more than any other defender in football history, and 239 in 685 games at club level in all competitions, giving him an average of better than a goal every three games. Since retirement, he has managed a plethora of teams, including each of Holland's big three, Benfica, Everton, Southampton and the Netherlands national team, although he has only won two trophies outside of the Netherlands in his career thus far, namely two Coppas del Rey, one of which he won during last season with Barcelona, although his position as the manager of the club is looking more and more untenable by the minute. Number 5. Roy Keane 
Roy Keane is the only man in this video never to have played for either of the El Clasico giants, although of course that doesn't make him any less worthy of a place in a video of this ilk. Born in 1971, Keane began in life as a footballer at Cough Ramblers, impressing sufficiently to be signed by Brian Clough's Nottingham Forest for just £47,000 in 1990. He began to stamp his authority on the English game immediately, with dominant displays in the centre of the park. Although with Forrest struggling towards the wrong end of the table, Keane negotiated the relegation release clause into his contract, which became active when Forrest were relegated in the first season of the Premier League era in 1993. Blackburn Rovers were the ones to trigger it, but he didn't have the correct paperwork by the end of the week to make the transfer official and had to wait until the following week to complete the deal owing to Forrest's offices being closed during the weekend. Alex Ferguson, sensing an opportunity as he so often did, swooped in at the 11th hour to secure Keane's signature, providing the correct paperwork on the Saturday and signing him for Manchester United for a British record of £3.75 million. Over the next 12 years, he became the beating heart of United's midfield, combining his hard man image with tenacity, energy, a wonderful passing range and superb tackling and positional awareness. He won a myriad of individual and team trophies with the Red Devils, including seven league titles, four FA Cups and the Champions League in 1999, albeit he missed that particular final owing to picking up a yellow card in the semi-final second leg against Juventus that suspended him from playing in the showpiece event, although his performance in that game against the old lady is widely cited as one of the best individual performances of all time, as he pushed United on to qualify for the final. His time there was littered with controversial incidents, including deliberately breaking Alfinch Holland's leg in a Manchester derby in 2001 after a widely publicised spat between the two, and establishing a legendary rivalry with Arsenal's Patrick Vieira. It is perhaps fitting, therefore, that he and United parted ways in acrimonious circumstances after he criticised the players in an interview with MUTV that was never broadcast after a 4-1 defeat to Middlesbrough in October 2005, which led to him terminating his contract with the club by mutual consent. Another high-profile instance involving Keane occurred whilst he was on international duty with the Republic of Ireland, for whom he won 67 caps, at the 2002 World Cup, when he was sent home by manager Mick McCarthy owing to a bust-up between the two over what Keane thought was substandard training facilities and pre-tournament preparation. He finished his career at Celtic, moving into management for Sunderland and Ipswich before becoming Martin O'Neill's assistant with the Republic of Ireland national team, and then Nottingham Forest, although most of his work nowadays revolves around punditry for both Sky Sports and ITV. And that just about wraps up today's video looking at the best footballers whose surnames, or in Kaka's case, main name, begin with the letter K. If you enjoyed it, of course, as I said at the start, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, plus you can ring the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload a video straight away. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you then.